Hello everyone in this video let us use a script runner to update the project role of a project from a value selected in a user picker field. So for this example we have this requirement where I want to demonstrate how we can use a script runner to simply use the value that the user will select from a user picker field. Let us say we have a user picker field in our project where uh, the users will uh, select, let us say, any user or uh, the user that they want to make or they want to add to the project role. Now, this is something that uh, can be useful in uh, various scenarios because uh, to update a project role, you need to be the project admin. But maybe for some reason you want to do it uh, or maybe you want to give this permission to a normal user or maybe you want uh, for some reason to users to select this particular uh, role and maybe you can have this uh, workflow transition where uh, uh, you can approve or you can do some transition and then based on the transition or based on the approval you can pick those values from a user picker field and add those people in the project role so for this example we'll of course use one uh, project and uh, We'll be using two different uh, two different fields, and we'll create two different roles. So we have two roles called a project manager and a project uh, sponsor. If I go back to my uh, project settings, and if I go to my uh, roles, I will show you those uh, roles that will appear in my project roles section, but uh, will be using script runner to update those uh, roles we can do it of course uh, from this section here we can manually update them uh, but we'll be using a uh, script runner and we'll do it uh, using a workflow transition and when, whenever you're working with workflow, workflow transition and you want to do something uh, after you have done your transition uh, you can use a post function so we'll be using a scripted post function to update the project roles so if I go back to my uh, project roles, my Jira is a bit slow. I need to probably restart, but I think this is probably fine for this video. Uh, bear with me. So this is my uh, my users and roles. And right now we don't have any project manager and project sponsor role here because there is no user. I'll probably click on this, add user to a role. And uh, just to show you how it looks like, I can uh, I can see that those two roles, project manager and project sponsor, are now uh, available for us. Now we'll be using script runner, and my requirement is uh, very simple. I just want to probably add these uh, people or any people that I want people to that, that I want users to select to be added to the project role when you create an issue. Very simple. So the moment you create an issue, if there is a value in the in the user pickup field, I'll pick those values and I'll update the project role. So for doing that, I need to custom field and I'll uh, add two custom fields, user pickup fields, very simple example. And uh, we'll add those two custom fields in the create issue screen. And then of course, we'll use a post function to uh, basically pick those fields and update the project role. So I'll create a new custom field. I'll click on the button and I'll uh, select my user picker. Let us work on single user. And uh, I'll name my user picker field as project manager. Let us keep it very simple. At the same time, uh, we'll create a project sponsor. So now we have a new field and I'll probably add it to Android uh, bug screen, probably all of them and I'll uh, update it. And of course it is up to you if you want to just keep it to create issue screen. But for this example, let us just, uh, uh, let us just add this field to all these, all these screens that are available in our project. So let us add one more uh, field. Again, user picker. This time we want to have project sponsor and create. Very quickly I'll add this uh, field to the uh, Android scrum bug screen. 
I think it is uh, used in my project for create and uh, that is it for the custom field. Now if I want I can quickly check. I can go to my uh, Android project and if I create a new story maybe I should see those two fields, those two user picker fields in my create issue screen. It's a bit annoying when your Jira is slow. That is why you need to make sure that you maintain your Jira instance. Uh, so let us uh, talk about uh, the original requirement. We'll talk about performance maybe in a different video. So these are the two fields that I was talking about, project manager and uh, project sponsor. Now you can uh, uh, start typing in and uh, let us say if you select uh, Mitch Davis and uh, Maybe some other user, I'll probably find a user. Do I have any user with... Uh, yeah, I think I found... Yeah, Michael, Michael Wilson. And these two users, I want them to be added to my project role, but it won't happen right now. Uh, we need to write code for it. So I want this to happen when I create a new story. So for doing this, we need to go to the uh, project uh, workflow uh, not project workflow, but the workflow that is uh, being used by my story. And uh, I'll go to my project settings and I'll uh, take a look at the workflow. So let me just wait for it to come up. So this is my workflow, by the way. Uh, it's a very simple workflow. I'm using, I think, a simplified uh, workflow. Let us wait for the workflow to come up. Okay, come on. So this is my software simplified workflow for Project Android and uh, nothing great about it, simple workflow, but uh, we will do it on create issues transition. So we'll go to the project settings and uh, we will uh, find the workflow. So the workflow that I have for my story is probably software simplified workflow. Yes, this is the workflow that I was talking about and we'll click on this uh, edit under actions. So we are directly into the edit uh, mode of workflow and we can start making changes. And uh, we will uh, go to the workflow transition called uh, create, which is the very first uh, transition in uh, this case. And we'll add a post function, very simple. And we already have a code with us. So we'll uh, save some time. We'll not write the code from scratch. We'll just uh, take a look at how code works. So. The transition that I was talking about is uh, this one, to do, which is uh, my very first transition. Uh, and of course, you can go to the diagram mode and you can uh, click on the arrow and you know the, the line that is coming from that uh, create uh, that circle. And you can uh, see that this is my create issue transition. <clears throat> so you can be sure that uh, this is your uh, very first transition in the workflow. So this is uh, the uh, transition and I'll probably click on to do here just to be sure. So yeah, this is the create and uh, the transition that I want to modify is create to to do. So I think this can get a bit uh, confusing. So let me just go back to the diagram just for you guys, someone who is uh, doing it for, for the very first time, uh, they can understand how it works. So if you go to the uh, go to the uh, workflow edit uh, mode, there is a diagram view and diagram view is uh, quite simple. You can do almost everything with diagram view uh, apart from few things which we'll probably talk about uh, in a different video. So this is the transition. If you click on it, you get this pop up on the right hand side where you can click on post function. So you can be sure that you're working on uh, the post function for the create issue transition, which is in this case, the very first transition. So this is the transition uh, transition that you should be looking for, where you have this uh, gray circle that is going towards to do. Now, you want to add a post function because you want to do something when uh, the issue is uh, getting created for the very first time, you want to update the project role. So we'll be using a script post function and we'll add a new script post function using a script runner, of course. And uh, 
when you work when you're working with script runner you have different options here like you can use some ready-made scripts that are easy to work on but we need a custom script post function and uh, we will take a look at what we can do here so we don't have a lot of configuration options but uh, we can uh, see that there is a field called inline script now you can add a note that update my project roles and you can add a code here so when you lo look at the code i'll first copy the code and i'll try to explain how it uh, works it is very simple code and uh, if you have been following my videos i'm sure you know about uh, how to access uh, different things uh, using script runner and if you're using the new script editor then it should be extremely easy for you to understand and take a look at uh, also the Jira APIs and you can find out what, what all you can do with the uh, issue or maybe custom fields, how to update, uh, let us say, a custom field value or maybe how you can update, uh, let us say, uh, how, 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 you can, how, how you can do a transition, add a comment and so many small things. But w when you combine these things together, you can do a lot of uh, automation. Now in this particular case, all we're doing is we are updating the project role. Now, if you go through this code, it is self-explanatory. You can, of course, find the link in the description, uh, which will take you to the GitHub uh, profile, where you can copy this code and you can use it. You can modify it. Feel free to, you know, break it if you want. Now, first of all, in this code, you can see here that we are doing some import statements, and uh, we also have uh, this piece of code that will fetch the value from the custom field for both the fields. First, for the project manager and then for the project sponsor make sure your custom field name is correct it should be either project manager or project sponsor or anything it should match the custom field name and we are fetching the value of a custom field using custom field objects by name this method will uh, fetch you the name by fetch you the value of a custom field not a value but uh, the field by their name and then you can uh, fetch their value using get custom field value and then we are simply uh, creating a list uh, one for uh, project manager and the other one for project sponsor let us say if you have more than uh, maybe instead of a single user picker field you have multiple user picker field and you want to do it for multiple users let us say you want to add three people uh, at the same time that the end user is selecting in a custom field to a project role then you can uh, be sure that this particular code will still work and um, once we have the list populated with the, the custom field value then we are using uh, another simple piece of code to update the project role so we have these lines uh, of code that will uh, let you first uh, retrieve the project role service uh, and uh, then you can use uh, again uh, this project role service to add people to this particular uh, project role in the project so we are doing it for a specific project and if you look at this this particular add actors to project role uh, method we are passing in either project manager or project sponsors this particular variable will uh, hold the uh, list of people uh, who you want to add to the project role and of course we are working on the project that uh, is applicable in this particular transition so if you if you type in uh, project is equal to issue dot get project object so this will fetch the project name of this issue uh, where this transition is happening and it will update the project role now let us quickly save this code and uh, publish the workflow hopefully this uh, code will work because we are using the exact field name and uh, I'm assuming this will work because I'm, I, I used this code on a different <clears throat> instance of Jira and uh, just for demonstrating demonstrating how you can also do it, I've, I'm doing it again on a separate instance of Jira. So I'll publish the workflow and uh, I don't want to save a backup, publish. So once you have, have your workflow published, <clears throat> what you can do, you can go back to maybe your dashboard or project and you can create a new issue and then you can see whether this is working or not so if i click on the create button so i will uh, create a new story 
because this post function was added to my story uh, workflow and uh, when we create when we create a new story it should ideally update the project role so this is a test project role updation and uh, <clears throat> we will uh, select maybe michael as a project manager or may maybe do we have any other user with different name we can also use this uh, user picker uh, so yeah we have a lot of users we can uh, use maybe vinod as project sponsor and if we click on create button at this point of time the post function will will basically update the project role if the code is working so we need to check if the code is working or not so i'll probably create uh, I'll, I'll go to the project settings in a different window uh, and uh, and you can see here that these two users are added to my or updated are you can see these users in project manager and project sponsor field user picker field uh, please ignore this ugly background color i need to remove it it's from a different video where i uh, explained how you can use custom css to make your jira look fancy if you want but for this video let us focus on project role so i'll quickly go to the users and roles and uh, i will take a look at my uh, my users and roles so right now i don't see i don't see those users added to my to my project role which is fine we prob we probably missed something so i'll probably uh, again go to the workflows and uh, i guess we worked on story yes we did work on story so to troubleshoot this what we can do we can uh, go to the workflow again if i click on the workflow uh, and uh, I can go to the project, not project, but the post function. So if I click on it, and uh, if you want to, of course, work on the workflow, you should be in the edit mode. So once you click on the edit, you will be able to modify the workflow or you can take a look at uh, the post functions. So this is fine. And uh, right now we can see here that uh, it says no failures in the last one execution, which is fine, which so there is no error in the code which is good and the post function worked but i am guessing that this particular post function should be after the creation of the issue because when this i mean you want to basically pick up the values from the custom field and uh, unless you create the issue the code might not work because there is no value because there is no issue so let us tr try to change the order if i if i bring my custom post function after the issue creation then let us see if uh, we are able to update the, the the project role so i'll publish the workflow and i'll go back to the original uh, original uh, issue this is uh, a test and this time if we select a project manager as let us say uh, we know and uh, project sponsor as Mitch Davis and if you click on the create button now your issue has been uh, created and uh, the post function should have also added the uh, project uh, added the people in the project role so if you go to the project role here and if you re refresh this uh, users and roles and if we take a look at the uh, roles so we have uh, project manager and project sponsor roles updated with uh, the people that we selected during the issue creation so this is how you can use this uh, piece of code to simply update the project role and uh, i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much